everybody. So yesterday we flew into San Jose and I visited Cayo Terra School, uh, Dave Camarillo's school. We went to visit Gumby at Heroes Martial Arts. Then we went and saw the site at the, of the expo. And then we went to Empower Gym with Tarek and that was a beautiful facility. I loved it. And then we went to uh, San Francisco 10th Planet with uh, Danny Procopos and it was absolutely amazing. So now we're on the car. We spend the night in Walnut Creek and now we're in the car heading over to Pleasant Hill to see Caesar's school with the Zoya over there. He's like my son, you know? So I'm really excited to see that and then we're out of here. So let's see what's in store today. Oh my God, it sounds like there's a lot of heavy duty training going over there. Oh my God. Get on your knees, please. All right, so today is a very happy day for me. This girl right here is my godmother. If it was not her, <laughs> I was not here. So, and then she's here to visit me today. After two years, you know, she, she was the first one to believe I can make it. When I was in Brazil, she gave me everything. I was, before I have a denied visa, everything, and she was the one like calling the consulate from here, like without not even knowing me before, and then you stand me the hand from here to there. So, thanks to her, I'm here teaching you guys today, and thank you so much for all showing up today for, you know, it's a pleasure for me to introduce her to you guys today. This is Rose Gracie, my godmother. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here today. I didn't think I was going to shed a tear, but of course, the seeing him cry is going to happen. Later. So, do you want to hear the story? How did it happen? Yes. So, I had a friend of mine that was, uh, we have very good friends, dentists, friends of ours, and we always go to their house. You know, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu and he lives near my house. And he was, um, he, he, he has a friend of his called Marina, her name. And she was always like, hey, Rose, you know, why don't you do the jiu-jitsu stuff? Yeah, why don't you look at my friend's videos and stuff? I'm like, not interested in watching another Brazilian with zero wrestling. No, don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, watch, please. You can help him and stuff. And this he really wants to come here. I'm like, not interested. Not interested. He got so bad that every single time we went to our friend's house, every UFC fight, every time we went there for dinner or anything happened, this chick will be like, can you watch him, please? Have you seen his videos? I'm like, no, 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 don't want to see it. Because every single video that I saw, it was just like this nightmare. I'm not interested at all. And I'm very known, very blunt. I'll say just things just how it is, like straight up. So um, I watched. I'm like, you know what? Just so this chick could shut up, I'm going to watch this guy's video. Because I don't want to even hear about it anymore. So I watch his videos. And can I tell everything? Yeah, okay, good. So I watch his videos and I'm like, all right, ha, if I call my husband, I'm like, check this out. So I send him an email back. I'm like, yeah, buddy, hey, thanks. Cause he sent me a message on Facebook, you know, on an account that I never use. So I'm like, fine. I'm gonna respond to this guy. Yeah, I'll take a look at it because he communicated with me. Then it was, I was like, fine, let me just watch these videos. So I watched the videos and I'm like, yeah, zero wrestling. Yeah, no, nope, two, and then I send him an email back. I go, bro. Too overweight, you don't look like a fighter, your wrestling sucks, you're like, all this is bad. So I send the list of all the things that sucked, and I'm thinking, okay, this guy will never call me again, because that's usually what happens when I just tell them everything. And sure enough, he emailed me back. He's like, yeah, you know, I know I have to work on these things and this stuff, and I'm like, all right. So, and, and then he, he sends me another email like a few days later saying, I came to the opportunity, like I have an opportunity to go live in America, so to move out there. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. I'm like, what state are you going? Are you going to Texas? You know, because when you say I have an opportunity to go to America, it seemed like he got a job out here. I'm like, did you get a job? What happened? He's like, no, I got some money and stuff. 
So basically, he got money from his family, his mom and everybody put all of the money they had and just gave it to him after they read my email saying basically, you suck and you're not gonna make it ever in your life. So he says, yeah, I have an opportunity. I'm like, so you wanna come here? He's like, yeah, and I'm like, oh, listen, you're gonna have to come on your own dime. I'm not gonna pay for you. You cannot stay in my house. You cannot do anything. I'm not gonna take care of anything for you. What I'm gonna give you is this. I'm gonna let you come in the country and you can partner with my husband for the whole training camp for three months leading up to his UFC fight against Joe Stevenson. So you can just basically see and you're gonna listen to everything we tell you to do. You're gonna do everything the way we want you to do or you can just pack your little bag and go back to Brazil where you come from. So when he showed the family this email, apparently they loved it. They thought, okay, this is the chick that you need to go with. So sure enough, comes oil. So he arrived from the airport into my house, the sec, oh no, then there was the consulate because his visa was declined a couple times. So I said, let me take care of this. So I send them a letter. So eight o'clock in, uh, in the morning, I get a phone call from the consulate in Brazil. And I don't wake up until like 11, okay? So I'm like, hello? And they're like, yeah, we're here with Alessandro. He wants to get a visa and stuff to go there. And I saw your name and I do jujitsu. The guy that worked in the consulate in Brazil did jujitsu. And he's like, I wanted to know if this is the real deal. And I'm like, yeah, listen, I'm Horian's daughter, Mel's daughter. I'm giving this guy an opportunity. He's not going to live in America. It's not, it's not the goal right now. He's just going to come here and try it out and then take it back, whatever he learns, and then we'll see from there. But don't worry, it's my responsibility. So if anything happens, if it goes down, give me a call. And I remember saying before I hung up to him, like, if there's any other Brazilians that want to come, call me too so I can verify, <laughs> make sure that they're okay or not to come. So I know he's really nervous over there, and we're all like, we're talking about how nervous he was because in the consulate in Brazil, apparently he gave the letter. The guy just picked up my letter with all the documentations, went in the back, talked to me for 20, 30 minutes, and I know he was having a heart attack sitting there. And he goes, okay, boom, here's your visa, you can go. So he, his, from the city of Sao Paulo where you gotta get the stuff to his house, it's like six hours, right? In the bus, and then you gotta get something else. It's like, it's, it's okay. It's far. It's far. So he I goes back farm, home. Huh? Seriously. Yeah, like seriously. I even told Zoe when he came here, I'm like, Zoe, you know, it'd be so fun when you go back to your city, they're going to have like a fire truck with you on the top of it and stuff. He goes, oh, they don't have fire trucks in my city. I'm like, what the hell? Dude, where do you come from? Like, hopping on the donkey and going back home and stuff. But anyway, it was really funny. So he did amazing and he worked really hard on the three months he was here. He more than surprised me. He was very helpful. He was kind to my kids. He was a hard worker, probably the hardest worker that I've ever seen. And by the end of his trip, I knew he really wanted to stay. And he told me, he says, listen, I would really like to stay in America, or live here in America for good. So then um, I had already hired Caio in here, and you guys trained with Caio, right? Yes. So I had hired Caio to work with Caesar, and I knew Caio was kind of doing his own thing, and I'm like, Caesar, I have this guy, I would like you to meet him, I would want, you know, I would really want him to stay here, and I think he would do really well, and it would mean a lot to me if you can help him out. So the next day, Caesar got him on the plane, and I told him, listen, you're going to do an interview, and I didn't really tell him much about it, you know, what was going on, I said, you're going to, you got an interview with my cousin and stuff, and I remember I picked him up, I told him what was happening, he was wearing a Jake Shield shirt, all proud to come in the interview. <laughs> That's true. So he was wearing a Jake Shield shirt, all happy, so I picked him up, took him to the airport, he came here, interviewed with Caesar, and then the rest is history. He really, really loves his students here, he really, really cares for you guys a lot, and you guys obviously know that. So, so that's the story. Oh. <laughs>